There are only a handful of experiments in physics that completely transformed physics. At m many people's top of the list would have to be the Michelson-Morley experiment. According to the mainstream heliocentric model, did Michelson-Morley debunk the ether? Yeah, yeah, that was the entire point of the experiment. It, it, it debunked the ether. All science agrees with, with the, the, the claim that the Michelson-Morley removed ether from science. I mean, you can deny it all you want. Is all that is needed to explain Michelson-Morley from within a heliocentric framework the removal of an ether? With no aether, that explains exactly the results that we got from the Mixer Morning experiment, 100%. Okay, perfect. Can we use an interferometer to detect the motion of an object moving in a curved path? Yes, we can! What you could do is use a tool that is capable of detecting something like the Earth's rotation, which an interferometer most certainly is. Can this be done without an ether? Yes. Perfect, okay. Is the Earth moving in a curved path around the Sun? Oh yeah! Can interferometry be used to detect on object moving in a curved path with or without an ether? No need for an ether for an interferometer to do what it does. Did the interferometer in Michelson Morley detect the assumed orbit of the Earth? Again, I already have specifically said that um, an interferometer is not able to detect Earth's orbit around the Sun. Would removing the ether alone explain the results of Michelson Morley? Not completely, no. The ether was the explanation for things at the time because they thought they needed a medium. But when they figured out that, oh, these are results that say that there is no aether, helped Einstein come up with his theory of relativity because we had to explain why the results were there if there was no aether. It's as simple as that. Did Michelson Morley debunk Newtonian mechanics? Transform science. Not only physics, but science. The question's irrelevant. Einstein is the current explanation of gravity. Um, so the, the question is completely irrelevant. The answer is yes. When Michelson Morley didn't detect the orbit of the Earth, immediately it debunks Newtonian mechanics. If relativity is required to explain Michelson Morley by explaining the orbit of the Earth cannot be detected, would a consistent detection of motion falsify relativity? Did relativity say? What did what did Einstein say to fix the situation? Well, Einstein said that Earth is actually free falling in a linear path, and because it has a linear speed, right and on the earth it's just going straight it's free falling then you can't detect you won't detect it with the interferometer because there's not an actual force acting on the earth it's not physically pulling it around the sun from the earth there is no actual force pulling us in a curved path we're actually just free falling without a force acting upon us in a straight path therefore the interferometer could not detect it in conclusion heliocentrism has been falsified and in fact for over a century. And not everybody can be a robot polisher. Do you hope Robot Polisher makes a video because I will take that video and put it in mine. What he's gonna get to do is he's gonna show that you said, oh, all you have to do is get rid of the ether. And then you said, yeah, everyone thought that Newtonian gravity was the case at that time, it, it, that's all there was. But it, it, it perfectly was an expected result if you just get rid of the ether. Then you turned around and admitted that Newtonian gravity can't explain it and that you have to actually use Einsteinian mechanics to do it. So you directly contradicted yourself. I don't think you actually are even keeping up with how you are, but when the video is made, obviously everyone else will be able to. Allowed them to remove the aether and, and you know have the relativistic calculations able to explain things. That was it. Measure if the Earth was stationary with the Michaels and Morley experiment, you'd have the same thing. It would give us no difference. The way to measure stationariness is use a tool that is capable of detecting something like the Earth's rotation, which an interferometer most certainly is. And if you set up an interferometer. Um, and try to detect the Earth's rotation with an interferometer, you most certainly do detect the Earth's rotation. Orbit is a rotation. No. No, rotate is to spin, turn, or revolve. Orbit is a rotation. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, thanks for playing.
Yeah. Earth does not rotate around the sun. It, it orbits or revolves. A rotation is not a revolution. You just read the definition that the Earth revolves around yeah. the sun. And then you read the definition of rotate and it says revolves in the definition that you read. Okay? No, I, so I didn't it say that. Read again then. Rotate is to spin, turn, or revolve. Right? That rotate, <laughs> revolve, different things there, okay? You it's just said rotate is to spin, turn, or revolve. But it's the same mechanical motion, right? Angular change in motion, change of direction, right? It's a rotation motion, right? We say orbit or revolution to distinguish between the axial rotation of the Earth and the Earth moving around the sun. Now, as it pertains to what we're talking about, MC Tune's home run was that, oh, well, you don't have any measurement of stationariness. I said, you don't measure stationary that's stupid it's a very stupid thing to say so then he keeps saying it so i said okay well then what would be a measurement of stationariness he said you can measure stationary of how course so? you can how do you measure stationary measure for rotation and if you get none then it's stationary so if you set up a device that is capable of detecting something and it doesn't detect it then that is a null result he said a negative result is not proof of stationariness it's not evidence of stationariness negative results would be evidence for a stationary no earth. it's not in fact it's it's quite the opposite it's a nothing result so then i said how would you measure stationariness then and he says you, de you create a device that's designed to measure rotation. If it comes up with zero rotation, you've measured stationariness. Which would, of course, be a negative result, directly contradicting his claim that negative results aren't actual evidence of stationariness because he has to double speak. And once I called him out on that, you guys jumped in and brought what up the semantical up? difference in orbit and rotation. Thanks for playing. So the question is pretty simple, right? So if the Earth were moving around the sun and Einstein said that this device was over 10 times more sensitive than it needed to be and should have been decisive, right? Then do you agree that that would have been, as Toon likes to put it, a measurement of stationariness? No, it's the wrong tool to measure stationariness. Back to you. Uh, an, an interferometer is not capable of detecting the orbit around the sun, but it can detect Earth's rotations. You said that the Earth's orbit is a rotation, so why can't the interferometer that's over 10 times more sensitive than it needs to be, and Einstein said should have been decisive, why can't it specifically detect the or, uh, assumed orbit since it's over 10 times more sensitive than it needs to be? You already, you already answered that yourself. I don't know why you're asking me questions that we've been through already, so back to you. Okay, it's because you claim that time slows down and tricks the whole world into thinking that the Earth is stationary and that the distance contracted. So can you explain to me how if you claim the measuring apparatus contracted, but you just can't tell, it's going to always look the same, how that's not a unfalsifiable religious belief. That's just a reification fallacy that then affirmed the consequent that you need to get you out of the problem of the stationary result. Lovely word sided there. Yeah, we've just got measurements and experiments of time dilation that work. So yeah, back to you. They don't understand the basics of anything, let alone debating relativity. I haven't studied relativity. I don't know a lot about relativity. So I don't really understand the arguments. I'm not a relativity expert. I don't claim to be. I don't care to be. It doesn't fucking matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't fucking matter. So you don't understand it. Oh, I certainly do. <laughs> no, you don't. You literally All right. don't. All right, come on. Okay, let me explain it to you. You just do your thing and you're just pretending like it's a problem, but you have no idea what you're even talking about, right? People that don't understand what the how, how the moon phases are created are trying to argue relativity. I'm not, no, I don't know. Uh, could <laughs> <laughs> So you disagree with Einstein? I don't know, whatever, don't care. Oh my God. <laughs> whatever it doesn't help you conclusion and the way you've reached your conclusion is wrong i don't have the right words to tell you exactly why now we can talk about your misunderstanding of mickelson morley which well, i know you're terrified and i don't have any misunderstanding mind-boggling absolutely mind yeah transform science not only physics but science